What is up guys, Left Lab here to talk about some Sparking Zero. As the Twitter account just dropped a tweet talking about the types of fighters in the game, basically to get you more acquainted with the fighters before you actually get involved with the game. So I figured why not look at that together as the game comes out in two weeks and I'm going to be playing with a lot of characters. We have the full roster, which is 181 characters, 182 if you include the pre-order DLC. And uh, this is going to talk about the fighting styles, the unique appearances you can find in Sparking Zero. And then they're going to have a look at the special maneuvers such as quick time events, switches, transformations. That's great. So jumping into this, we have the types of characters. There's different play styles. Their style is affected by their statistic size and their forms. So they're going to tell us about the strength characters first. Strength, these characters base most of the gameplay around heavy strikes and powerful blasts. That is good to know. That's very good to know. Although they might be slower their raw power will compensate as they will deal high damage to their opponent some of these characters are so strength oriented that some may not even stagger from key blasts and smash attacks see that is good to know that's really good to know based on their statistics these characters can have two types of specialization melee and blast the first one will enhance the damage dealt with rush combos in close combat, while the second implies that the character can rely on blast attack and key blast to inflict damage. Man, that is really solid. So let's actually open up the roster here. All right, we have all these characters, so strength-oriented characters. I don't know what character is going to be so strong, they just don't stagger. Maybe those full power characters have corrupted some Masu, probably, possibly. Maybe? Nah, I don't know. Beerus doesn't seem like a really strong character like that. Maybe all of the Broly series, they might be strength oriented. Full power Frieza, definitely super. Zarbon might be strength oriented. Maybe not enough to like not be staggered. That's interesting how that's going to work. On the opposite end, some characters base their attack strategy on their swiftness, which they can use for long lasting assaults, which are hard to interrupt. Ooh. See, I like that. Even if some of their strikes are lighter, their opponent will have trouble trying to catch you as you move quickly all over the map and deliver combos at stunning speed. Escaping from rush combos of characters that rely on speed will be tougher for the opponent compared to characters not fitting in this category. Interesting. This bow is going to be annoying. I hope mm, she might actually not count in that. Maybe Ultra Instinct Goku may count in the speed category. Android 18, maybe, maybe. I'm not entirely sure for that one. Hit? Hit can be counted in speed category. Does it say that? Oh, no, it doesn't. It just puts the image of what they are. The next category we have is Key Blast. There are some characters who are master of Key Blast, excelling in a fighting style that they can maintain control while keeping the opponent at a distance. They have the ability to fire multiple consecutive energy blasts while consuming the minimal energy. Oh, man, that's going to be annoying. Vegeta is a good example who is known for his powerful and rapid key blast. Other characters include Goku, who can unleash his or unleash the iconic Kamehameha, and Frieza, who possesses the precise death beam. That's so interesting. Okay. Then we have giants. Given their impressive size, these characters are much slower than others, but they strike more powerful blows that will stagger and send your opponent flying away. On top of that, they are numb to throw in some blast attacks. You can take advantage of their overwhelming presence on the map to hit your opponent with a wider hit range. Their impressive size and power comes at the expense of having trouble hitting smaller opponents, which may evade their assault more easily. That's so unfortunate. What the heck? Okay, so skill moves like that, those uh, physical skill moves don't work on those giants like that. Man, androids is his own category. All right. Androids are artificial humans that do not necessarily possess key. In fact, they do not charge their key bar unless their energy reaches the, ma reaches the maximum level. Their key gauge will charge automatically over time or through melee attacks and it will stop charging once it reaches maximum. To incorporate this into your strategy, continuously strike with rush combos giving your opponent no chance to charge his key. Some androids even have the ability to absorb key blasts in certain blast attacks during super perception which will charge their gauge much faster. Oh, that's cool. The characters that automatically charge to the maximum are Android 13, 16, 17, and 18. On the other hand, Android 19 and Dr. Jiro can charge key by landing, can charge more key by landing melee attacks. And furthermore, they can absorb the opponent's key blast and some types of key wave blasts. I was hoping that uh, Android 17 and 18 and 16 would be able to charge faster by attacking, but it's all good. It's all good. Unique look. 
Try characters with the unique looks and distincts, distinctions in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. The game faithfully reproduces some features of the series, whether it's accessories, ability, or cosmetics that may or may not affect the character's gameplay. For example, we have swords. You can absorb, you can enjoy multiple ways and fighting styles in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, as swords fighting is one of them. Iconic swordsmen from the series will use their swords in a lot of combos, rush, and blast to faithfully recreate their famous moves. There are also characters who use the sword to launch energy blasts that pierce through guards with the smash energy blast. You have Super Aura. Some characters, such as the strongest form in Dragon Ball Super, have their aura be- Oh my god. Have their aura being always on. Their power is overflowing, which results in stunning visual expression of their key. That is really cool. Scouters, oh that's cool. The Scouter is an iconic item from the Dragon Ball series. In the game you can select characters mostly from Freezer Force and equip them the Scouter as an accessory which will grant a boost of the search radius when equipping depending on the quality of the Scouter equipped. With this previous accessory, the players will be able to avoid losing track of their opponent for too long. Note that damage taken during the battle could result could result in the oh my god damage taken during the battle could result in the destruction of the scouter when the scouter is destroyed it becomes difficult to locate the opponent if they are lost lost from sight you have ground characters like in dragon ball series some characters cannot fly once they jump they will slowly fall back to the ground as they cannot remain in the air for a long time compared to flying characters on the other hand they are the only ones that are able to run on the ground, so take advantage of their skills and try to get to the and try to get the fight to take place on the ground. They're the only ones that are able to run on the ground. Select the desired transformation uh, and press up to display the transformation panel. Then you select with square or X or triangle or Y. Oh, okay, it's pretty straightforward. The statistics of the character will improve. Confuse as well by pressing up in L1. Okay, that opens up the transformation panel. And then the switch is possible once the green icon is lightened, okay? You press left for that. All right, left on the D-pad, and then you get to switch. Okay, and now they're starting to talk about Sparky Mode. To enter Sparky Mode, you must charge to go maximum, okay? Sparky Mode not only enhances your abilities, but also offers a variety of other benefits, such as allowing you to shoot Key Blast without consuming Key. That is really big. Use moves such as Violent Rush. You can perform continuous rush until your gauge runs out, resulting in an uninterrupted barrage of melee attacks. You can also perform Hyper Smash, which will inevitably break the guard of your opponent or super movement as it consumes some of your sparking gauge and allows you to vanish and move instantly. And then you can emote by pressing right on the D-pad. Perform the emote with your favorite character who takes cool stances. Oh, that's going to be sick. Okay, Speed Impact. A speed impact sees the two fighters clash and trade a series of blows, perform a speed impact by clashing with your opponent using the dragon dash, and this also occurs when a rush type blast collides with a dragon dash. This impact action is divided into two main parts. First, the single strike, both sides must match their inputs with what is being shown on the screen. Once the winner of the single attack is decided, the action proceeds to rapid strikes. During rapid strikes, uh, the final damage inflicted is decided by the number of inputs performed by each player. Once the rapid stage ends, the winner of the single strike will send the loser flying, concluding the encounter. Oh, that's really sick. And then you have power impacts. This happens when two characters perform a throw at the same time. This impact is centered around comparing strength by holding corresponding buttons during the clash, or by holding corresponding buttons. During the clash, a gauge will be displayed. You must adjust your inputs in order to not exceed the needle. The winner is determined by whose gauge is closest to the needle when the power impact ends. Oh, okay. Crash impacts. Crash impacts is triggered when both characters use step at the same time. Wow. Once the crash impact begins, the two sides will be randomly assigned the roles of attacker and defender. The input shown for the attacker and the defender are different, so the players must follow the directions on screen. If the attacker wins the exchange, the defender will take damage. If the defender wins, they will protect themselves. A maximum of three exchanges will take place. The first player to win two exchanges will knock back the other player. Blast Impact is an impact action that occurs upon the collision of two ranged blast attacks. When a blast impact begins, a meter will be displayed on screen, and a gauge on the right will begin increasing. Pressing will convert the gauge into energy for your blast affecting whose blasts will come out on top. 
In addition to single button presses, you can increase your power through rapidly tapping the button as well. The winner would deal tremendous damage to his opponent. Dang, okay. And that's everything. I mean, that's actually really comprehensive. I'm kind of glad I went over this. Let me know your thoughts, guys. What type of fighter are you going to be using? I'm probably going to be using speed types. I'm going to be completely real. Speed types and key blast types alongside androids. That's just me. Y'all let me know which ones you guys are going to be using in the comments below as we are still waiting for Sparking Zero coming out October 11th where we get it early October 8th because we got the Deluxe Edition.